Praise the Lord. No complaint. Amen. Praise God. I understand that uh, Any other testimonies from Sunday night? Praise you for Oh, yes. My dad got my good one. My one day tried to make a dress for the day. He was alive. And this old girl hurt, and this old girl hurt. But earlier today, I said, God is healing me, he healed me, he said, go away. Praise the Lord.
We haven't shouted, we haven't run, we haven't danced tonight, and, and, and the message and the lesson or whatever that I have, I don't think that we will. But it still doesn't mean God's not going to do something miraculous in somebody's life. Right. Whether it be physically, emotionally, uh, mentally, uh, uh, God can do some great things. Amen? Uh, I know, like I said, we, we ought to know this by now after doing this, but what I'm going to teach on tonight is Christians aren't always to pray. We should always pray. And I'm going to read a rather lengthy uh, scripture out of Luke chapter 18, starting verse 1. You can stand if you like. Um, and if you uh, begin to hurt for whatever reason, uh, in the middle of it, you can have a seat. God knows and He'll understand. But if you're just lazy, well, that's between you and God. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. In other words, he got tired of her coming around. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, through he bear along, bear along with them? I'll tell you that he will avenge him speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that were righteous, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a Pope. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as, the, as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to, the, to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You can be seated. He that humbled himself shall be abased. And one of the meanings for that word abased is to be humiliated. He that humbled him, him humbled himself shall be exalted. Yes. We're going to touch a lot on this. I may not get to it tonight, but I'm definitely going to hit on the first verse where it says that Christians are that men ought always to pray. And uh, looking at the definition of ought, uh, that definition is uh, in this lesson it means we are under obligation. We are bound. And it is necessary for us to pray. How many times we went a day or two days or three days and we realize we haven't prayed? And uh, if, you're, if you're anything of a Christian and you don't use it as a catchphrase, you begin to worry about yourself. You begin to worry about uh, your walk with God. But all it is that we are obligated to do this. We are bound to do this and it's necessary for us to do this. And too often... We often uh, offer prayers to God without persevering in prayer until they are answered. We can go, and I'm going to use this as an analogy, and, and the reason I'm going to use it is because uh, somebody can't say, well, he, he's just picking on me. But football season starts real soon. Matter of fact, preseason starts tomorrow night with the Saints. And... Uh, and Labor Day weekend, LSU plays their first game in Houston. And, uh, but I'm saying we can, 
Michael, we can sit there and watch. Well, Dad, we can sit there and watch a game of our favorite team losing the whole game. But we're going to sit there that four hours with a hope. Persever persevering that they're going to come back and win. But when we pray, we're not even now, you'd be surprised. Have you ever done this when you pray? Uh, you, you feel like you've been praying for a while and you look at your watch or you look back there and you're like, we've been praying for five minutes. Okay. We're all ready. To, we are ready to get up. We're ready to talk. Yeah. We're ready. I mean, we know. But you're supposed to have a need. But you're going to, you, you know, just, it, it's going to be like a prayer in passing. Man, but, but prayer is one of the great themes of the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. And, of course, uh, Tonight we're going to really hit on um, uh, that we ought to pray, that we should pray fervently. Um, the, there's a bunch of scriptures that are relative to the prayer life of you and I. And God's Word uh, instructs us uh, to pray. We are sure that God is looking out for our spiritual welfare um, by instructing us to do so. 1 Timothy 2 and 8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Pray everywhere. That means everywhere. No matter where we go, we should pray. Amen. Oh, man, people are going to think I'm crazy. They might think you're crazy, but that don't mean you're going to be praying out loud everywhere you go. I mean, you... When you begin to pray, you pray in your mind, your thoughts, and everything. God hears that as well. Amen. Uh, but lifting up holy hands, um, there. I mean, I know when I was in the secular workforce and working and stuff like that, there was time I would get in my office or I would go to the back of the warehouse for the day and I would pray and I would actually lift my hands and pray for a few moments. Amen. If somebody came back there, oh well, <laughs> I just have to look at it as a way to testify to them or or witnessing them. Yeah. Amen. Um, it says, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Amen. And uh, and then James 5 and 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. How many of you prayed for each other during you know, this 21 nights of prayer? Yes. Yes. How many of you continue to pray for each yes. other? It's yes. not just something that was that was uh, scheduled for us to do. And, that, and you know, I understand that we all, we should know now after 21 nights of prayer, but I just want you to understand also that this, we don't just pray when it's scheduled to pray. Amen. Uh, but it says, confess your faults one another and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. And fervent prayer, I'm gonna I'm gonna point out that for just a moment. The word fervent means to have an intense feeling and enthusiasm for something. And of course, we just read here in the book of James, chapter five and verse sixteen, where um, the writer here uses it in the context of an effective prayer. Uh, and James is making the point here that. Uh, praying with passion and intensity is an important part of seeing our prayers answered. I mean, do you really believe just, and I know God could, but I think when we pray, we have to understand that it's not just so God can do something for us, but when we pray, we're showing our faith in God. Because if you didn't have it, you wouldn't even ask Him. Amen? Um, but we're not just to simply go through the motions of prayer. And, and I know uh, there's some religious places you can go and their prayers are rehearsed. And, and, and they read prayers from a book. Yeah. Uh, and I understand that, that we have prayer books. Okay, well we have one of the greatest of all, and that's the Bible. Yes, I understand that. And even... Even when we pray and we open the Bible, just just by reading that, where there's no no intensity behind it, there's no feeling behind it, there's no enthusiasm behind it. I'm not so sure that it's not just bouncing off a wall and coming right back at you. Oh, uh, we we when we read the Bible, we pray, 
I mean, we, and we, I think we, we, we try to tell you that often if you don't know what to pull out your Bible, begin to read it and, and read it as a prayer. Amen. And I mean, one of the greatest prayers that, that you can find in the book of the Bible is in the book of Psalms. And I'm going to tell you, it, it wouldn't hurt you to read it about every day or pray it about every day. And that's Psalms 51. Amen. And that's David pleading, yes. you know. And that, I mean, you know, none of us are perfect. None of us, all of us are striving to reach that point to where we can have perfection. Yes. But uh, but we're not there yet. Amen. I always tell somebody, I say, nope, not further today. I'm not there until I step on the other side of glory. Amen. Amen. And uh, so when somebody says, oh, you just think you're perfect, I just laugh. Because, I mean, I know better. Amen. And because uh, I'm not going to be that way until I get over there. Amen. But we can't go through the motions of prayer. Can't just pull out that you know that you know that prayer book. And I know you can buy a book here and there, and it's got prayers in it. And those things are great. Brother Johnson's book about spiritual warfare. Wow, you know. But if you just sit there and read it and say, "Well, I read it, I prayed," it. and I think all you're doing is just is just spending time, and that's it. There's no there's no uh, there's no meat to it, if you would. Amen. Uh, it's just. Uh, and the Bible says something about vain repetition. Amen. Um, and it does no good. Um, but it, all, it should also be noted that this is this is not uh, that this is not the only element. For it is the prayers of a righteous person that are effective. Uh, James urged the believers to confess their sins to each other. And and in the Message Bible it says it so that you can live together whole and healed. So being open about our weaknesses with one another and God will have an influence on how effective our prayer life will be. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I believe I'm probably one of the most transparent preachers that I know. Um, I, I, I don't recall a lot of preachers that get up and tell you, uh, you know, a lot of their faults and, you know, uh, when I want you to pray or when you made a mistake this week and I'm up here preaching trying to get you to offer and I'm like, I'm the first one to raise my hand, you know? Um, and that, I think it helps, though, if if you uh, want to increase your prayer life is if you have someone that's a prayer partner, if you would. And if, if there's something going on in your life, you want to feel where you can go to them and trust them and, and open up to them, amen, and and uh, when you open up to them and let them pray with you and pray for you, amen, it, it, it would be such an awesome thing to know if you can just pick up the phone or you can, you can text a person or, uh, or whatever and just say, hey, look, I, I, I'm struggling. I've got some things that, you know, I, I've made a mistake. Or just come right out and say, look, I've sinned. I need you to help me to get back on track. I need that prayer life your prayer life to affect my prayer life. Amen. We can affect one another, whether it's a prayer life or if we just shoot negativity toward That's each other. Right. Right. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, when negative remarks, negative attitudes, negativism within itself toward one another will diminish not only your prayer life, but you will find the prayer life of this church begin to diminish. Amen. We have to be positive. In a negative world. We have to be positive in a negative church world. Amen. Um, but uh, we need to be open uh, to one another. And especially to God. God already knows. Amen. He, he, just, he just wants us to be open about it. He wants us to be free to go to Him with it. <coughs> we can't be afraid to go to God with our problems. Amen. Uh, with our uh, with our faults, Amen. Um, but how do we pray fervently? If we're to pray with passion, it is important that this is real and from the heart. We have to be real and from the heart, Amen. And Jesus cautions about praying just to look impressive. And that's what he was talking about in that parable just a moment ago. I mean, this guy, I mean. How would you like to walk in and hear somebody just praying all about themselves and how, how I'm better than this one? Thank you, God. I'm, I, I, I'm better than Eddie Rogers. 
or I'm better than Melissa Summerford, or I'm, you know, I thank you God I'm not like that, you know. And, I mean, it would bother you, man. But, uh, but you know, whenever you come humbly before God, I mean, there has to be a spirit of humility when you come. I, I always pray, and, and, and I say, God, you're worthy of the glory. Now, God, I am nothing. I am nothing, God. I am nothing. If I don't have you, I am nothing. I'm just a shell of a man. I am nothing. Yeah. And uh, but we can't we can't pray. I mean, a lot of us pray out loud. Sometimes I pray out loud. Sometimes sometimes I don't even open my mouth when I'm just praying to God in my mind and I'm talking to Him. And I tell you, a lot of times when I pray like that, that's when I hear mostly from God. Yeah. Is when I'm you know quiet and God. And that's not saying that I haven't heard when I was praying out loud. Really bad. I'm just saying a lot of times. When I'm just, you know, like uh, meditating, if you would, on the Lord, that's when I hear from Him. Right. Um, so we can be loud, we can be exuberant, but if it's in vain repetition or if it's just being, uh, you know, bragging on ourselves, you're just filling the air with negativity. Yes. Yeah. But we, uh, you know, we need we need to to be uh, humble. Amen. We need to have that spirit of humility uh, about us. And uh, we need to increase that passion of prayer in our life. Amen. Um, we get excited about a lot of things in the work of God. We get excited about a lot of things uh, in church. Amen. But one of the things we need to be more excited about and have more passion about is that each and every one of us have a prayer life that is out of this world. Amen. We saw just an just just a little touch of what our services and what people and what the lives that can be changed by a twenty one night of prayer of an average of about forty five minutes a night. Yeah. Amen. That I mean, can you imagine if we do it all the time and and and, and come in before service every time and you know it, it's thirty minutes before, but if you can't make it here to twenty minutes before, whatever. But come in and pray, not talk, not sit yeah. around. Not, not, you know, not brag about your day or go home about my day. It was horrible and all that. That just brings in when it starts to surface again. It's a lot different if you come in and pray. God, I've had a bad day and I'm telling you this, but, but God, you're still good in my life and I'm going to praise you tonight. There's a whole different atmosphere when the service begins. Amen. And, and you know, and I, I, I've been guilty of it. Oh, I've heard all day, or I've just had a bad day. And you know, if mornings would start after twelve noon, it'd be a great day. And, uh, you know, I mean, we can do things like that. Amen. But it, but it doesn't. All it does is just damper. You ever? I don't know if you noticed on Sunday night, or even the, the, the whole time we've been doing this prayer. Uh, sometimes you come in, it's just like a drag trying to get started. But then, then these past few weeks, it's been a lot better, and I, I, you know, in, in getting the service started and the worship has been coming more easily. It's been coming more free, freely. Amen. It's because we've been praying. You know, we've been praying, and we come before church, and we pray. We don't have time to spread negativity. Amen. But we can spread positive things and. And, and, and when we talk to God like that, you know, that's, that's what it does. Uh, but there's five ideas. <clears throat> five ideas.